thoughts looking back then on Monday? You came out with a statement saying that uh, you wouldn't do that again against the big boys, playing two up front. No, it's not, it, it wasn't a case of playing two up front. It was just the way we got uh, stretched. And I think against um, the better teams, you know, they, they can exploit you. And they certainly did on Monday night, especially first half. I thought we were much more together second half, much more compact. And, you know, if Sardo had scored a goal, looking back at the game, then, you know, we, we would have been well in the game then. Where do you, where's the cut off? You said against the big boys. I mean, where do you go? Now, when I say playing two up front, is keeping two up front. You can play two forwards and drop one back in and, and we didn't really want to do that at times we wanted to keep the two of them together and as close together as possible so you can play against you can play against them but one has to drop in to really to fill that gap and pick up because they're spare players and especially on Monday night Silver just caused us so many problems Does that leave Sido tapping on your door on Tuesday morning saying Gaffer does that mean I'm going to have to go on the right wing again because I don't, <laughs> I don't like playing there <laughs> Actually he did very well when he played wide and his attitude was absolutely first class what about Sido? I know you had some questions last week. I mean, are you confident in keeping him in this trap? No, as I've said before, you know, you, ne you never say never to anything. The last window, the w window before that, or the, sorry, the, the one window that I've been at the football club, um, from the start of that window opening to the end, everything was about Sido and whether he'd leave or not. And I said exactly the same as I'll say now. You know, if there's an offer that comes in, it absolutely blows you out of the water. Nobody keeps their players. Everybody moves. So to say that the, you know that the player is not going to go and, and, and the, the, you know if yeah if the money's not right you won't go, but if someone came in and blew you out of the water then the club would think about it. I don't want to lose him. You know I think it's you know if he left the club I don't think it'd be um, you know good for his development. You know he's a regular year. The, the supporters uh, you know really appreciate that he's a good player and what he's done for the football club. And he's integrated much more with the group now than what he had when I first came, Pete. So, you know, he's a good lad, and you know, we want to, and a good player, and we want to try and keep those those players. And I'm guessing there's got to be a cut-off point because if you get into the last week, and you sell your best player. You know, you're, you're going to be hard pushed to get somebody in on here, or, or, do you have, or do you have to have a contingency now where you think, well, if he goes, I'm going for him. him or no, him. I think I think there's all. There's, you know, the the biggest problem. You know the, the 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 thing that has to be sorted out, Pete, is is this transfer window. To have a transfer window that runs into the season, overlaps the season, I think is is yeah, it's really poor. You know, for you know the the transfer window should close and then the season should start, and then that stops all this nonsense for four weeks, which is an absolute nightmare for for everybody, especially the the clubs in our position who who need to strengthen um, and need to get players. And you know, it, it, you know, everybody waits till the last minute. You know, you wait until that, you know, the last bits have, have dropped off, and everybody has has moved, or the bigger clubs have moved for their players, and then you scrap amongst what what's left. So, you know, I I really do think the you know the, the football authorities should really take a good look at this and and just say, you know, the window closes the day before the season starts, and then everybody's settled. Everybody understands the squad they've got, the group they've got. And there's none of this nonsense going on. Does it not work for you though? Sometimes, where say you, you get to the first game, you've told the chairman you need a centre half, you lose three 0 to Man City, and you go see, I told you. Yeah, but that can happen after the window closes. You can bring a player in, and, and the centre half gets injured, or something happens, and you're in the same position. You can't, you can't improve it then. So you know, it's still the same position, Pete. So I just think that it's it's a ridiculous situation to have. Have it overlapping um, when the games have started. I think it should be finished. There should be a cut-off period of the transfer window, and then the season starts. What's your new striker like, Randall? Yeah, he's done very well. You know, he's obviously him, him and uh, Gnabry, who's on loan from Arsenal, have uh, spent a lot of time with the fitness coach and working. And um, but Solomon has showed a great attitude. Really, really good lad. Um, yeah, and we've been um, we've been impressed. We've been impressed with him. What's um, who do you compare him to in the modern day game? Who's he like? Modern game. I, I've, he, he reminds me a little bit of Denver. You know, Denver Bar in, in in the way that he wants to run off shoulders. He's he's quick and strong, and he wants to score goals, and he gets in between the goals. So you know, he's he's that type. Um, you know, he's not exactly like Denver. He's, yeah, but um, he's he has got that. You know, that willingness to wanna to get. You know where you want him to get, and that is in behind defences. And when you're in the final third, he wants to get between the goals. Your uh, opposition, I'm guessing, 
you're not massively a fan of their turnover of managers over the last year. I think they've had five. Nothing to do with me. Quite happy to be here at West Brom. Yeah, but you're a big LMA. <laughs> you're a big LMA. No, I, I, you know, people have got to do what they've got to do. And, um, you know, if they're doing that, they're doing that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not. I can't discuss it, Pete, because I don't understand the way the clubs run and and what what what. You know, you, you give me some information. Just ask me about the academy. I've been involved in it now for a long time, so I've given you an honest view of what I think. But to talk about a football club, I don't know nothing about. It's, it's, no, I couldn't do that. But they're feeding of uh, Udinese players the, the one year. I mean, they had. Well, they've they've signed some good players from 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 abroad, so obviously they've got good contacts abroad, and you know they've they've brought you know they they, they look strong. The players they've signed are good players. Um, having watched them for for the last couple of weeks, yeah, they look they look as though they've brought some good players into the country and players who suit the, the English game. So, I I would uh, yeah, you know you, you can't fault them on that. It's just a, tr- a tricky one for you because a lot of the I think the first the, f- the first four games of the season are, 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 are very difficult for us. I think to have Man City and Chelsea at home, undoubtedly the two most successful teams in in England over the past four or five years. To have them as your two home games to start with it was really really difficult and then to play a newly promoted team in their first away game or first home game um, and then to, to go to a local derby away at Stoke and then the window closes so you're still working through the window and still working hard and there's so many things going on behind the scenes these four games are always going to be difficult Just finally for me how many more bodies do you need in before the window shuts for you? I don't think it's a case of how many bodies we need in. I think we, you know, we need some out as well. So you know, we've got, you know, there'll be players here who want to play football, and um, they won't be happy sitting in the, in, sitting on the sidelines. So, like I say, it's 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 something that I believe very strongly that should be organised, sorted out, and done and dusted, and then the season starts, not when the season has started. No, everybody's all right. Everybody's fine. Yeah. No, like I say, all all that stuff. You know, if we get it done, hopefully you'll be. Well, you'll know about it. Hopefully, when we get it done, I think to talk about it. Any of the uh, any of the deals we're trying to do, either ins or outs, then you know that's it's wrong of me to talk. Could you could you carry three keepers? Of, Experience. Uh, yeah, you know, we we don't know how Ben's going to cope when he gets back into full time training. You know, so yeah, and and you know, we'll, we'll look at it. Um, and Ben might need to go and have a few games before he comes straight back into it. We don't know if we do if we decide that. Then obviously we've got big competition with the two that will be here. So and then when the three are together, we'll we'll look at it there if we get the three of them together.